Well, for a view on the expenses controversy, I'm joined now by Howard Government Minister Peter Reith. He's with me live from Melbourne. Peter Reith, good morning. What do you think about the attention this is gaining at the moment, this expenses controversy? I think it's a uh, reflection on the fact that politics is not as entertaining as it was under Labor, and a few uh, in the press have decided to kick some of the coalition members, and they've evened it up by having a go at uh, Bernie uh, Ripple, who doesn't seem to have breached any rules whatsoever. Uh, in the same way that I don't think any of the coalition people have either. You, you say this is petty. How could attending a wedding be easily be reasonably regarded as something a politician should be paid for? Uh, Joe, if you knew anything about politics, you'd know it's very easy to do so. And the fact is, it's quite a compliment for somebody to be invited to a wedding of which, uh, you know, which involves some of their colleagues. And uh, you might be. I was once invited and went to a wedding in Melbourne. Uh, of a very senior person in the business community in, in Melbourne and I had to deal as a minister a lot with the business community on workplace relations and look as a minister you are 24-7 a minister there's no such thing as ministers who are you know time off basically unless it's the annual holiday for a week or so I mean this is all just part of being a politician if you get an invitation to go to a, uh, a private occasion uh, then the judgment you make as a minister is is this worth it from a political point of view? And that's why it is political. Getting to know someone on a personal, intimate basis can be a very important part of what you do as a, as a politician. And to deny politicians the right to get around the country as they deem fit in the pursuit of their uh, activities as politicians, I think is silly. I think it's petty. Uh, cars, for example, I mean, apparently this is now in the you know, in the um, in part of the discussion. I mean, for most ministers, their car, or shadow ministers, their car is part of their office. Now, to say, if someone goes to a wedding by car, you know, I can guarantee you they'd spend half of the time on the phone talking about politics, policy issues, or whatever it is, all part and parcel of what they do. OK, and well, what about, what about going to a fellow MP's wedding? Well, I think that's, again, I mean, getting to know someone who's a member of the parliament, you mightn't have had but, much but of you, a chance. But you've got, you've got as much of a chance of getting to know them while you're in parliament rather than going to their wedding. Well, 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 that's your experience. But you see, the truth is you don't have experience as being an MP. And as, a, as an MP, to go to somebody's electorate, uh, to have the compliment of being invited you know, to a family occasion is an important way in which you can connect with somebody. But it's not just weddings. I mean, where are you going to draw the line and who's going to manage this? And I can tell you who's going to manage it. It's the Department of Finance and they couldn't run a chook raffle. But why, why can't you just do it in, in Parliament? If it's a fellow MP, why couldn't you sit down them with, um, at their office in Parliament, have a chat to them in Parliament? Why should the taxpayer pay for you to go um, to in, interstate to their wedding? Well, the... You know, the basic proposition is, is that uh, people are saying, or you're suggesting, that what you can do as an MP and what you can't do should all be set down in a set of rules, uh, that those rules will then be presumably managed by the Department of Finance. So take somebody, for example, going to a wedding. Uh, I've already mentioned uh, the use that they might have of the car in pursuit of their uh, various duties. But it's not just that. I mean, you then get into a situation where MPs have to advise some department who they've seen, when they've seen and what they've discussed. Now, I think that's just totally uh, unacceptable. Uh, MPs should not have to respond to the, to the bureaucrats. The ultimate response about all this has to be, you know, the, the sensible treatment of, of these expenses, cars and mm. flights, uh, it... by MPs and, pub and the public and, in the end, you know, their colleagues will, you know, determine what sort of person they are. And Isn't can I just make one yes. last final point too? I mean, the vast majority of Australian politicians, I know it's not, you know, acceptable or part and parcel of what people say, but the vast majority of Australian politicians are decent people and they don't need to be, you know, pushed around by the, the age as they've done in the front page yeah. today. Well, uh, maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's just a matter of having clear rules then. Um, there just, are no such thing as clear. Well, there well, are never there, there clear... Could be, there could be a clear rule <laughs> saying you can't claim on weddings. So taking your argument to its, uh, nat through, through its natural course then, wouldn't it be appropriate for a police officer, say a public servant, attending the wedding of a colleague interstate 
to claim that on uh, the well, it's the got public, nothing to, to do to with to claim that on on the public <laughs> purse because he's talking to other police officers at the wedding about policing. Well, that's just nonsense. Why? I mean, why? Take, why? Why is that any well, different? Well, let me give. Well, let's have a real example. Julie Bishop was invited to, and others are invited to, a wedding in India. Well, let's take uh, uh, so, so, well, Sophie let's Mirabelle. Take well, one. let's okay. take Sophie Mirabella's wedding. No, well, I've given you a good example. Let me pick the example. She goes off to a wedding. <laughs> well, the, she goes the, the, off the, to the Mirabella <laughs> example is more appropriate. That, that's, that's more of what this is in line with what I mentioned. Oh, so what are you now saying? Oh, the Mirabella one's not okay, but the one to India no, is okay. No, I'm just okay. using that as and an example. And who's going to decide I'm that? I'm just using that as an example. So a police officer, using that argument in relation to Sophie Mirabella's wedding, wouldn't it be appropriate for a police officer, a hard-working police officer, I'm not saying politicians aren't hard-working, but a hard-working police officer going to the wedding of a fellow officer interstate and talking about policing at that wedding to claim that wedding on the public purse? Well, it just shows you how ridiculous your proposition is because what, what you're saying is, what you're saying is, okay, we'll have a no to that one, but if a shadow minister for foreign affairs is invited to a wedding in India, which is a huge compliment and a great opportunity for that shadow to get to know people in India, a very important, you know, uh, uh, country from Australia's point of view, that one would be okay, but that one wouldn't be. And then what are you going to do? You're going to have a bunch of bureaucrats deciding which weddings you can go to. I mean, seriously, how petty can you be? <laughs> but is it, isn't this important in terms of encouraging uh, trust and faith in politicians generally in the country? Because p politicians um, aren't generally thought of particularly highly by the general population. And with these, all the expenses wrought, wrought story that's been going on over the, over the past couple of years with different organisations, this, wouldn't this be a good opportunity to clear this up? Look, this will never be cleared up. I've been, yeah, as you know, I've been the subject of this myself. Yeah, you, I mean, you've had it, to pay, it, repay tens of thousands of dollars from a phone card. Well, I did. And I mean, there was fraud on my card. Uh, I only found out about it five years after it started because the fraud fellow from Telstra rang me up and said, look, I've raised this with the Department of Finance. They've done nothing about it. You obviously don't know about it, so we thought we'd better tell you yeah. about it. And, and so, I mean, there's a classic case, but I don't want to go to my own personal circumstances. Yeah. But can we but, just get back but, to how the general population might see this? Like, like a, a hard-working police officer or teacher or whoever um, sees politicians going to a fellow MP's wedding and claiming it on the public purse, it, it seems like a bit of a rort. Well, you can certainly make it out as a resort, uh, as a rort, which is clearly what's happening in the press now. And quite frankly, it always happens this way. Uh, you know, I mean, does that make you know, it I right? Can, I can, does that make I it right? I consider this, you know, courageous on my part, Joe, to even be here because, you know, you can never win these debates. They're always run against you. Uh, and they're sort of, you'll know, never satisfy people about it. And, I mean, the sort of strange thing here is, too, if people, you know, the press carry on about this, they never well, say anything not about... Only, it's not only the press carrying on with, uh, about this, it's John Hewson. Yeah, well, I don't agree with John. I mean, no. I think he's a great, well, you he's can't a great just, fella, you can't but I don't agree with him it. on you this occasion. You can't just dismiss it as an invention of the press. Well, no, I don't, it, I don't do that entirely. That is true. But I think it's also true uh, that the press love these stories and their front page and they give it a huge run. And, well, you know, and it, they, because they, the press are pursuing this because it goes to a matter of public trust in the politicians. Well, that is true. And I think, uh, you know, uh, and I'm all in favour of politicians being subject to the highest levels of scrutiny, provided it's reasonably, you know, managed. Uh, but I think we both know it's often, you know, very much exaggerated. And fortunately, you know, the Australian public are not that stupid to, you know, believe everything they read in the papers. I mean, this guy, I don't even know him. I know he was there when I was there. I think Bernie from uh, Bernie Ripple. I mean, it, from what I've read in the paper this morning, uh, it was just... You know, evening up, we're going to attack the coalition, so we might as well attack some bloke on the Labor side. So, you know, I, look, I'm all in favour of proper proper scrutiny. Don't get me wrong. I think it's uh, it is important, and public trust is also important. And so, therefore, you've got to have you know reasonable systems in place. But uh, just picking on weddings and saying, oh, we're going to have a special category, you can't go to weddings, really. When you well, get not, into it, they're not it, saying you can't go to weddings. <laughs> well, yes, they <laughs> are. Just don't claim it on the taxpayer. Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Prime Minister, J T Tony Abbott, in future, he's not to go to weddings, apparently. It's, that's, that's, the, that's it's the not, proposition. not to go to weddings, it's just not to claim expenses on them anyway. But anyway. Right, so as so you're saying, he cannot go, he basically well, can't, 
He he is not entitled to go as prime minister. That's what you're saying. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying anything. I'm just putting forward different arguments that people. Well, are well, I'm just. We're... Well, I'm not arguing Tony's case one way or another. <laughs> yeah. But but in the end, I mean, prime ministers and senior political figures are often invited to this sort of function. Uh, to me, they're social functions. They're often invited to all sorts of social yeah. functions, not just weddings. You know, you get to be taken to the footy or to the arts. I mean, the Minister for Arts goes. Are we going to say the Minister for the Arts can go to an arts function, but the Prime Minister shouldn't because it's just a personal benefit, so therefore he should pay? I think it's just nonsense, complete nonsense. OK, well, we may or may not hear a bit more about this. Peter Reid, thank you. Well, we will, mate. It never goes away. It's a story. It's too good. When okay. there's a vacuum, okay. run the expenses that, argument. That, thanks for putting <laughs> yourself forward, Peter E. Okay.